Hey guys, it's Eddie the Magic Monk. I want to talk about a very interesting concept today and that is why is it that when you integrate a function you get the area under the curve. Now um, if you can accept that when you integrate something you get the area under the curve then you don't need this tutorial because I'm simply going to talk about the proof behind why that is. So if you can totally just use the formula to get the area under the curve and you're happy with doing that in the exam then skip the tutorial but this does help you understand a bit further about how calculus works and why it is that when you integrate something you get the area under the curve. So basically there are two functions. There is a function for the graph or the line. So for example y equals x that's a straight line. And then there is a function for the area uh, underneath the line. So what we're proposing is that if you integrate the function for the line, so if you integrate it then you will get the area underneath the line. But what does that tell us about the reverse? That means that if you differentiate the function for the area you will get the function for the line. So that if we can prove that if you differentiate the function for the area you get the function of the line. If we can prove this then we have also proven that because integration is simply the reverse of differentiation. So this is what I'm going to prove to you guys today that if you prove if you differentiate the function for the area you will get the function for the line itself. So let's embark on the journey to prove that. So in order to prove that um, I will firstly draw a graph. So let's just start off with the simplest graph. Let's just go something like this. A graph like that. So let's make this um, y equals f of x. Right? We don't care about what the actual equation is right now. I will make up an equation to prove to you that what we have discussed is true later on. I'll show you that in uh, a graphing program. But right now, let's just do the um, algebra behind it. So let's say I allocate a certain point on the x-axis. Um, so this is the x-axis. So this is an x-coordinate. And let's say I have a function for calculating the area underneath the graph from where x is 0 to the x-coordinate. So x is 0 and the line will probably, this is a parabola, so but we're not going to deal with the negative section of it. So I'm just going to say I have a function for calculating the area underneath the curve from where x is 0 to where x is x. So let's call that function f. f bracket x, capital F. Okay, this is capital F is different to small case f. So capital F of x calculates, is a function that calculates the area between 0 and x underneath, underneath uh, the curve. y equals f of x. 
Okay, so that is the first definition. Um, so this area here is f of x. Now I'm going to um, define another number called h. Okay, so h is a certain number that indicates to you another x coordinate where the value of the x coordinate is x plus h. Okay, so h is the difference between the two x coordinates. So this distance here, this distance here is h. Right, so we have two x coordinates. The first one is x, the second one is x plus h. And then what is the area underneath the curve from x is 0 to x is x plus h. What is this area? What is this area? Okay, so that area, the green area is f of x plus h. <clears throat> Right, f of x plus h, this function calculates the area underneath the yellow line between x is 0 to x is x plus h. Okay, now, what if I want to calculate the pink area, which is the area that is, um, that is green but not yellow. Okay, so what if I want to calculate this pink bit? So the pink area, the pink area, pink area is equal to the green area, which is this whole thing. So green area is this whole bit here, f of x plus h minus the yellow area which is f of x, right, that's the pink area. Okay, so now we got to establish some sort of relationship between this equation and the equation of the line. So if I want to, if I want to find a way to calculate the area of the pink bit all right, this pink area here, if I want to find a way to estimate it using um, no calculus, using no calculus at all, how would I find the area of this section? So what we want to do now is we want to use the formula for calculating the area of a rectangle, the area of a rectangle to estimate, right? To estimate the area, the pink area, to estimate the pink area. Okay, so how do we do that? How will we estimate this area? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend this is a rectangle. So I'm going to pretend that this section here is a rectangle. All right, I'll make the line a bit thicker so you can see it. I'm going to pretend this section here is a rectangle. So what is the length and the width of this rectangle? So this rectangle area, so rectangle area equals um, length times width, length times width. So um, the length is h, right? The longer line is h. Well, in this case, h is very long, but h should be pretty small anyway, but I'll talk about that soon. So length times width, um, so we got h times the width, so what is th this line here? 
what is the length of this line? So the length of this line is the same as the y coordinate of this point. Right? Whatever the y coordinate of this point is, let's say it's 3, let's say y coordinate is 3, then the length of this line is going to be 3. So, but we don't know what the y coordinate is yet, so I'm going to rub that out. Uh, so the y coordinate is just going to be f of x. Right, because you're going to put the x value into the function for the line, and that will give you the y coordinate of this point, which is the length of this line. So h times f of x. Okay, now what do we notice about the area of the rectangle and the pink area? Is that the area of the rectangle is slightly smaller than the pink area, isn't it? If you look at the pink area, it is a bit bigger than the area of the rectangle. So we're going to write that down. We're going to say the pink area... is bigger than the area of the rectangle. Right? So put the equations into the put these equations into that assumption. What we're going to do is say f of we're going to copy and paste this over here next to the pink area, so f of x plus h minus f of x is bigger than um, the rectangle area which is f of x times h. Okay, so now Imagine, this is where you need to imagine, okay? If I bring these two x coordinates, these two x coordinates, x and x plus h, if I bring them really close together, if I bring these two points really close, so that h becomes zero, if I bring them really close together so h becomes 0, what happens to the area? The area will be almost identical. I'll show you this in a graphing program in a second. But if I bring these two points really close, the rectangle area, the orange bit, is going to be almost the same as the pink bit. So then, I'm going to say that the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x as h becomes 0. So unfortunately you do need to understand the concept of limits. Limits basically says when h is approaching, when a variable is approaching a number, what happens to the equation? What happens to the y variable? So we're saying that when h approaches 0, this area is going to be the same as the orange area. Okay, so using one of the limit laws, one of the limit laws says that you can multiply by a constant on the outside of the limit and it can actually go inside the limit. So what I can do now is I can divide both sides by h, divide both sides by h, and then I have limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h equals f of x. So I have just proven to you, I have just proven to you that if you differentiate um, the area, because if you guys remember, 
the derivative of a function, okay, this is going back to differentiation again, uh, dy over dx, or f dash of x, is equal to limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So that is the cons that is the definition of differentiation. So this what this is saying is that if you differentiate the area if you differentiate the area equation you get the equation of the line. You get the equation of the line. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that if you integrate the er the equation of the line, you get the um, area equation. Okay, I hope this has helped you guys formulate some conceptual understanding as to why when you integrate the area of a curve, um, you get the uh, sorry, when you integrate the equation of a line, you get the area under the curve. And when you differentiate the area under a line, you get the equation of the line. Okay, thanks for watching guys. See you next time.